planet is home to millions and millions of living species. Some large, some small, some well known, and some yet to be discovered. But many on the verge of disappearing forever. Florida is home to a large number of endangered species and unique lands, but with a population growth that ranks as one of the highest in the nation, it is now more important than ever to protect our environment. Luckily, there is the Archbold Biological Station. Located in the heart of some of Florida's most pristine landscapes, the station is a world-renowned ecological center dedicated to understanding and protecting one of our planet's few remaining wild places. a very special place. We're a national natural landmark. We're an internationally important conservation site for what is out here. I mean, this is one of the rarest threatened habitats in North America, the Florida scrub. We have 19 federally threatened and endangered species on our property. That's a lot to be responsible and care for. Hillary has dedicated her career to studying and protecting these rare species. She is not alone. Archbold Station has a long history of welcoming scientists and students for short and long-term projects. They all share an interest in better understanding this truly unique part of Florida. The station is located on what is actually an ancient barrier island known as the Lake Wales Ridge, a 115-mile long stretch of land that was created when water levels rose to cover much of Florida. The species that survived on these ancient islands were isolated from their original habitats. The result is a rare collection of plants and animals found nowhere else on Earth, like the Florida scrub jay. Florida scrub jay is the only bird that's endemic to Florida. No other birds are endemic to Florida. What endemic means is that they are found in Florida and absolutely nowhere else. The scrub jays are known for their close family values. So the jays have developed a system where they stay at home help their parents, they get the benefit of living in a group, and they sort of bide their time waiting for either a neighbor to die or maybe their own parent to die in which they can inherit their own territory. But their territory is at risk. The Florida scrub jay is extraordinarily threatened, um, primarily because the habitat on which they depend, scrub, is also extraordinarily threatened. This is uplands, and in Florida, uplands are really valuable for humans. Protecting species and land is a key part of the mission at Archbold Station. Richard Archbold was an avid explorer, aviator, and naturalist. The grandson of John D. Archbold, the second president of Standard Oil, Richard spearheaded three major biological expeditions to New Guinea in the 1930s. In 1941, he decided to explore closer to home and obtained this property from John Roebling, grandson of the Brooklyn Bridge designer and father of one of Richard's school friends. From then on, the station welcomed scientists from around the world to come study. Boy, when I come out here, it feels just like I'm going home. In particular, I, I always think of this as kind of my backyard. Warren Abramson began coming here with his students in the 1970s. The facilities are here to in, enable good science, and particularly good field science. There are many, many, many places where you can do great lab research, but there are a limited number of places where you can go and do good field research. You look at a plant like this and you think, oh, what is it, 10, 20 years old? No, these things are thousands of years old. We're in a very ancient, habitat here. Science isn't just facts, it's a process. And so whenever we can get out into the field and not only try to understand the process, but also to see the agents of change, that's just the best way to teach. It's just a remarkable kind of experience for a teacher, but I think also for a student. Students of all ages have the privilege to come to Archbold and learn, whether for the day, a week, months, or even years. Education is a major component of the mission. 
Richard Foreman has brought nearly 300 students from Harvard University to Archbold over 28 years. It's really important to see and feel these things. All these students sit there with their computers all year round like that, and I do more than I want to do. You come to the Archibald Biological Station because it's just a wonderful place to feel and experience nature. If you don't see it, you won't protect it. You know, if you don't know what it is, you won't love it, and if you don't love it, you won't protect it. And, and I think that's something that, that's very important. I think I just saw a little bird flit around in there. Learning starts early here at Archibald. When you work with a young kid, it's really exciting though because they're seeing things for the first time. And you realize that even though they're from this area, this might be the first time that they've ever been out here, the first time they've ever seen a live snake. And they have all kinds of questions. And, and you get to be the person that opens the door to this you know, wonderland that's out here. Look, I already found really good. Who has gold? It's really about the falling in love, identifying with it, saying, I'm from this part of Florida, this part of Florida is very special, and it's up to me to take care of it. My main goal is to have every kid leave uh, in love with this scrub. Snakes, birds, spiders, plants, and even ants, they all have an important role to play. Ants are everything in Florida. They're all over the place, and they're doing lots and lots of important things. Mark Dayrup studies and carefully draws the details of Archbold's smallest but often most important inhabitants. More than 1,500 species of beetles and a 1,000 butterflies are known at Archbold. These long-term intensive studies would not be possible without the continued support of Richard Archbold's family. When he died in 1976, his sister, Frances Hufty, stepped in and became chairman of the board. Three generations of family members have been active trustees and all share a passion for science, education, and conservation. Some also share Richard Archbold's passion for aviation. Frances Hufty's grandson, Carter Lighty enjoys flying to the station from his home in Palm Beach. I just love the freedom of it, being able to get up and go anytime you want. From the air, he can see how much the station and the surrounding lands, which are the headwaters of the Everglades, have changed since the 1940s. Archbold has grown into a world-class research center now managing nearly 20,000 acres in this vast watershed, including a full-scale working cattle ranch with 3,000 head of cattle. The ranch is an ideal location to study conservation solutions for our wildlife, wetlands, and water. Just one more way that Archbold can help protect Florida's future. We are trying to make a difference. We're working hard to preserve what we have, we're working hard to educate our children in the importance of conservation, and um, we're working hard to encourage people to come out and see what we have at the station and what our vision is. I don't think we're going to preserve areas that we don't love. If we love an area, if it means something to us, then we're going to take care of it. Archbold stands at the forefront of the fight to build a sustainable future for Florida. With your support, we can help protect some of Florida's last remaining precious lands. This is one of the most extraordinary places on earth, but it's still under threat. We still have to be worried about roads and developments. We have an enormous responsibility. If you ask me what's the most important thing I can do for the next hundred years, it's to make sure that the great, great grandchildren of the people who love Archbold can come back here and say, what an extraordinary conservation success they made of this place. We need help to make sure that happens over the long term.